It's so good to see you via the internet. Um, great to be here. Um, I'm so excited to be talking about um, all things zine making tonight and journaling um, because this is something that's been a huge part of my creative practice for a really long time. Um, so I'm going to start by just talking a little bit about my work. So I kind of call myself a bit of a multidisciplinary artist um, with a focus primarily uh, on making wearable art. Um, I love to make sculpture um, and explore photography um, and do drawing. I like that kind of convoluted title because it allows me to think that I can do lots of different things um, and thereby everything that I make in my mind kind of exists within my art practice. So um, I'm also very keen on making tinsel jackets um, and wearable art pieces and things like that. Um, but in the artia realm, um, for the last couple of years, I did a project called Apomogy, which was about um, saying sorry with a pom-pom. Uh, and this year I'm actually working on my first solo show of um, sculpture and paintings, which is happening later in November. Um, and that's actually inspired by letters that I kept uh, as a teenager. Um, and that ties really well into journaling because um, letter writing and keeping a diary and kind of keeping a document uh, that has reflections of my life has been something that I've always loved to do. Um, and I've always found it kind of empowering to keep these documents um, because, you know, when I was 13 and living in Melbourne suburbia and often I would maybe feel a little bit isolated and um, in, you know, the experiences of being a teenager, those awkward phases and things like that. Um, and I always kind of found solace in keeping a diary and keeping a record of what I was going through, no matter how trivial. So this kind of brings me to zine making. Um, I hadn't made a zine for a number of years. And when COVID started um, a few months ago for lockdown for here us here in Brisbane, um, it was something that I kind of immediately turned back to as a way to document this really unprecedented time. Um, so I've actually been keeping a zine ever since lockdown began in Brisbane. Um, and so I've got lots and lots of zines. I've got a big stack here. I'll just grab a handful. You can see I've got um, zines upon zines. There's a massive stack here. Um, and zines was something that I first learned about years and years ago. Um, I first heard about zine making um, in Melbourne. There's a place called the Sticky Institute and it's this really small little shop at the bottom of Flinders Street and um, they just sell heaps of specialty art zines. And I've got some here that I've bought over the years because I kept going back. Um, this is a little zine made by Mel Stringer. Um, I love her. She's a really amazing illustrator. And this has just got a lot of pictures in it. Um, and she's really great at doing that kind of documenting her life thing. If you follow her on Instagram, you'll see um, lots of cool stuff. Um, I've got some here. This one's about making a zine. Um, if you get into zine culture, you'll probably hear a lot about risograph printing and gokko printing and all fun kinds of ways um, to make and fold zines. There's a really huge community around it. So that's a real favorite of mine. Um, and then Gemma Flack, this is another favorite. You can see that she has a quite a simple but well, not simple, but I was going to say simple illustrative style. It's like simple but iconic. Is she's just like so great um, and has done this zine about all these um, illustrations. So uh, as soon as I kind of stumbled upon them, there was something about them that I immediately fell in love with. The idea that you could just take a little bit of A4 cartridge paper and make your own book about whatever topic that you want. Um, I don't know, there was just something that I really loved about that because it didn't have to be, you know, you don't have to submit your book, your life memoir to a publisher in order to get published. You can, you know, make a, a little booklet about your day and empower yourself to publish something by the end. And I just think that that's really cool. Um, and so uh, I kind of tapped into it. 
another fun source of inspiration for me after I kind of discovered the Sticky Institute, um, some of you might have heard of Tavi Gevinson, who to me is an icon. Um, and this is the Rookie Yearbook and is a really great book uh, to anyone who maybe loves uh, teen culture and um, reading lots of articles about the teenage experience. Rookie is a really great resource. Um, and they're community that they cultivated with Rookie uh, did a lot of meetups where they made zines and I saw this online. I always just thought it looked so cool. Wanted to go to one of those workshops in America. I think they actually did one in Melbourne, but I think I lived in Brisbane by that time. Um, and so just participated on my own uh, at home. Uh, so I'm working out of my little studio here. I work in a really small space, um, but I've kind of just made it my own with some ribbons. This is actually the front room of my house. So it's really little. Um, so if you have a little desk space or something at home, uh, obviously a fun area to make some zines. Um, so yeah, so I hope that gives a little bit of insight into uh, why I love zines. Um, they can really be about anything. Uh, in terms of keeping a daily journal, I think a zine is different for me uh, because a zine usually has like a topic or a focus and it is just a short um, piece of work. Whereas a journal is maybe like an ongoing rolling diary entry or if you're doing a visual diary it's entries about your art and that sort of thing so the things that we talk about today i'm going to be making a zine you can absolutely apply to your journal keeping or visual diary making um but the idea for me of making a zine is that you can just do it and it's done sometimes i feel like keeping a daily journal or keeping a big visual diary can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming because there's so many beautiful blank pages that you need to fill and you can just make a two page zine you can make a 10 page thing. You can really do whatever you want. But I like the idea that it's kind of a bite sized thing that you can tackle and finish in a day um, so that you feel like you've conquered a creative project. And that's part of the reason I did this too, because I felt a little bit strange during this COVID time. Sometimes I felt a little bit aimless or I just needed a kind of vessel to channel some of my feelings in. And that's what a lot of my zines have been about. So I'm going to show you some of the zines now that I've been creating over this time um, and then we'll launch into making our own zine which is going to be super fun. Uh, so what have I got here? Um, you can see that I've made a couple in a bunch of different sizes. So the size I generally make a zine in is A5 which is what I'm going to do tonight. Um, and you can see here I've used some ribbons to adorn this. Um, I've got Oh, look, gosh, I love a ribbon, don't I? Um, a ribbon. And then you can see that I've just filled out with like textures and spray paint and all sorts of things. Um, this zine here, I've done a collage on the front. Um, and then this one here, I actually made a little mini zine. So it's much smaller. It's like like nearly the size of a postcard, but again, a little bit smaller. And then I've also been experimenting with some larger zines. So um, this is A4 and inside they're just illustrative. I've got all kinds of just like nonsensical scribbles and stickers and things like that. Um, you can see that my style is very kind of kindergarten-y, I guess you might call it. Um, I just really, uh, I kind of call these like automatic drawings. So when I'm doing them, I'm not thinking about too much. Um, there's no pressure for what I'm creating. Um, I might pause after I've done some scribbling to kind of assess the composition that I've made. Um, and then I will add again in a kind of automatic fashion. I think that the best automatic drawing is done when you're kind of meditating about something that you're thinking. So if you're stressed about something or if you have an anxiety or you're really happy about something, I think that kind Kind of harnessing that feeling and then letting yourself free draw um, is a really great way to um, create an automatic drawing and it's definitely my go-to for creating the illustrations for my zines. So um, these are what I've made. Um, I love using a ribbon because I love making it. It kind of makes me feel like those little diaries you might keep when you were like I don't know, seven and they had a little padlock on them. There's something about tying it up that makes it suddenly feel quite um, private. So I'm gonna undo this one and just see what I wrote in this zine. Um, maybe there's not a lot because sometimes I don't actually put a lot of writing in them. So what have I got here? 
I've got so much on the news about Corona for this front page and quite a contrasting image here too. Oh, I've got a little goodie inside. I've got just some writing that says feeling foggy. I've used a fun little hole punch here. Um, and I've also got some kind of grim news updates. I must have been feeling a bit grim this day. I've just got some construction paper, um, going to Skype with some pals to feel better I've written um, and just put some like little facts and things, um, I guess. And then in the front, I've written the date so that, so this was on Thursday, the 26th of March. Um, and I guess weirdly now I have a memento forever of the 26th of March, which previously I might never have had. So uh, I'm just gonna tie this up again. Uh, a fun little thing too, which um, has become my like favorite tool of my zine making lately, ever since I got it, um, just for my zines, because I've loved making them so much, I bought a little vintage typewriter off eBay. You can get them quite cheap, maybe ask your parents for one for Christmas if you find that you really love doing it, or scout out an op shop when the shop's open again. Um, or don't, you can also just print out some pages on your normal printer. Uh, but I've been using a typewriter to just do some little again, automatic poetry and things like that. Um, so gosh, these are quite personal, but uh, this one, I actually wrote about the dream that I had uh, the night before. Very strange, I've always had a recurring dream about pools. Um, so I wrote about that. And then again, I just wrote about my day. So these are really just kind of like daily reflections. Um, some I know have no writing at all. I've just done this kind of automatic drawing stuff. And I think that happens a lot on the days where I've had a really busy day and I don't want the pressure of even writing anything down. I actually have a little baby. So sometimes I genuinely feel a little bit foggy. Um, but again, just want to immortalize the day and empower myself to feel like I've done something creative if um, I've gotten really busy um, or not. Sometimes I just literally want to um, mark that the day happened and feel like uh, keeping a zine is a really great way to do it. So now one thing I will say is this kind of abstract automatic style that I have, that's that's like the style that I love, that's a style that I have come to over time. I really encourage you if there's any kind of artistic style that you like for you to just really go for that and use that with your zines. Um, of course, if you want to go in this sort of direction, go for it. Um, I encourage you to explore this technique, but um, if there's some kind of style that you love or even you want to explore with your zine making, um, I really encourage you to do that because um, it's awesome when you can look back even on how your style might evolve uh, by doing this activity every day. And um, I'm going to stop rambling and we are going to get to making zines in a second. But uh, I find that repetition is a really great way to tap into your style and your art practice and everything like that. Um, because uh, I just feel like there's a lot of discovery to be had by doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, so let's get into it. I am going to get to making a zine and take you along for the ride. I'm actually gonna launch a little poll at this start to get us going uh, because I would like to know what you would like my example zine to be about. So um, if we can get that poll launched while I set myself up uh, and then I can see what this zine is going to be about. I thought it might be a bit more exciting than just um, making the, the zine about what I did today because it wasn't too exciting a day. <laughs> and I'll make that myself later. So I think that poll might be happening. Let's see what's happening here. Okie doke. So. What am I going to make my example zine about? Am I going to make it about what I had for dinner, what my favorite song was when I was 13, my houseplants, or my recurring dream, which you know now is about pool? <laughs> Let's see. I'm so excited to see what you decide. Oh, look out, houseplants. Oh, this is actually quite exciting. Houseplants are really coming up on top. Now I'm like, oh, I actually love my houseplants so much, so I would love to immortalize them in this way. But I mean, these other talking points, I feel like I can't even say what I had for dinner because truthfully, I haven't had it yet. <laughs> but I can tell you what I'm going to have for dinner, which is very exciting. Okay, so let's see the winner of the poll about my houseplants. I was so unsure where it was going to go. 
Um, but let's do it. My house plants, it shall be. Let's do it. So um, I'm going to make, uh, how many pages is it going to make? It's going to make about eight pages because I'm using four sheets of paper. Um, let's share the results. So 48% uh, voted for house plants, just to clarify that, to know that it hasn't been rigged. <laughs> um, but uh, let's launch into it. So what I have here is I have four sheets of A4 paper. Um, very truthfully, I actually have a, a kind of like thicker piece for the front page. You do not need to use a thicker piece of cardboard for the front page, but um, I'm going to use that. Just it kind of makes me feel like it's like the title page. It's a bit weightier. Um, and then I just have three sheets of A4 paper here. So very simply what I do to begin with is I just fold them in half from the get-go. So I'm going to do that. Folding in half and then I just make it nice and tight on the sides. I usually actually just do it on this on a flat surface. So I'll use my desk to make sure corner to corner everything is really knuckle down. Uh, but you can see I'm kind of actually using a bit of a schminky piece of paper. It's um it's quite torn and, and again, it's a really fun way to use some scrap paper as well, this activity. So uh, you could also use A4 sheets of magazine. Um, you could use little scrap pieces of paper from old art projects. It's a great way to recycle paper as well. Um, but I thought I would start fresh here just for a little blank canvas. And also because I've got such an old stack of A4 paper from a printer that died. So in some ways we are recycling here. So now I have all my folded in half pieces of paper. Now, some people might like to decorate them before um, you start actually like gluing it together. I like to start decorating my zine um, once it's all bound, then I feel like I'm working in my own personal kind of coloring in book or something. Uh, so what I do from here is I've got my cover page here. Uh, which is my thicker kind of piece of cardboard. And then I'm just going to nestle in all my other sheets just like this. So one on top of the other. I might pull this down just a little bit. Um, one on top of the other. There we go. And we've got our little booklet. So I just fold it in half and tap it there. And we're good to go. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can secure your pages in. So I'm going to use needle and thread today because um, I think that's a really easy way to do it. And again, you feel like you have a professional bound booklet. Um, but you could also use some sticky tape by taping the seam of each page together. You could use a stapler, proof of stapling right here. Stapling, you'd have to just staple like, like this if you have a normal stapler. So just do like three staples, one on the end and then one in the center. Um, or if you have access to kind of like an industrial stapler, that's how the legit people do it. You put um, your piece of paper in and then use a big industrial stapler to do that. But if you're just doing it from home, your probs don't have that. Or maybe you're really fancy and you do, in which case, good on you. Uh, but like I said, I'm just going to use a needle and thread to create um, some little puncture holes uh, and then a nice secure stitch. So. Let's go ahead with that. Shock horror, if you have access to a ruler, I say shock because I never usually have any desire to measure anything, but I'm going to do it for this so that we can be professional and have nice, perfectly bound zines. Um, so I'm just gonna measure two centimeters down from, so I've got my center line here, and I'm just going to make a dot two centimeters down from the top of my page. So just make a dot there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing four centimeters down. So you can see with my dots, maybe you can see it's very tiny. I've just got two dots and I'm gonna do the exact thing, same thing on the other end. So let's do it. Fun, fun, fun. So my house plants, what is there to say? Where do I begin? There is so much to say. Um, this is gonna be cute, cute thing. Okay. Did you like that interlude chat? I love a chat, don't I? Okay, so I've got all my dots here stunning. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, because I'm holding all my sheets together, I'm just going to take a needle and I'm just going to pierce a hole through those dots. And that's just to give me like a really clear little entry hole for my sewing that I'm going to do in a second. Uh, so I'm going to do that to all the dots. This reminds me of when you were in school and you got those pictures, uh, basically dots to dots and you like puncture them all. 
uh, fun throwback. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, someone said they could write a whole scene about the amount of houseplants they've actually killed. Maybe I should do a whole page RIP all my houseplants that I've killed too. I find that the hardest plant to keep alive is that fiddle leaf fig. I don't know how many fiddle leaves I've murdered in my time, but they were all over Instagram for a time. And I was like, these figs are stunning. Um, uh, but I never can seem to keep them alive. Wow. Maybe there will be a page to, to all those fiddle leaves as well in memorandum to the fiddle leaf. Okay. So I have punctured my hold um, and I'm now ready to sew my thing together. So I'm going to take a little needle here and I'm going to thread that needle. I like to thread it with a long string of thread. How long is a piece of string? These are the questions we ask ourselves. I'm going to thread the needle. Let's see how blind I am. It is a bit low lighting in here. It's quite atmospheric. Okay. So I'm just going to take my thread. Of course I used white. It's quite hard to see, <laughs> but I'm going to thread it and then I'm just going to tie a knot at the bottom. And I, I just tie that knot about like seven times so that it's like a really secure little um, knot. So done. I've got my needle and thread and then I'm just going to sew each section together. So I'm going to do one section of sewing here and I'm going to do one section there. It doesn't matter um, where you begin, but I kind of go from inside to out. So you've already pierced your little hole, so that's super handy. Yeah, the whole piercing just kind of makes it easier to go through, but live your best life. So I'm sewing a needle through, I'm sewing my needle through there and then I'm just going to go back. So very simple. I've done that and then I'm going back into through my holes. Cool. And then again, it's really hard to see because classic, I used white, <laughs> white thread, but there's a little bit of thread on the outer there. And then I'm just going to do that like five times so that it's really secure. I'm just going to go in and out, in and out of that little section. So you can kind of see me do that here. I'm going out and I'm going back in. Stunning. Oh, I'm in and I'm back out. Oh, this isn't going to get old because I'm going back in. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, cool. So one more time for good luck. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. But obviously I'm making like kind of like a reflective zine, but zines can journaling can actually be like super helpful. I think in one way they can be super helpful for like self-reflection. And like I talked about before, the repetition of kind of developing your art practice and looking back, but they can also genuinely be helpful. And I've like, like I said, I've bought a lot of zines. There's one zine that when we were allowed to travel, I used all around Japan. Um, I've got that here too, just to show. Um, this is by Hello Sandwich and it's called The Tokyo Guide. Um, and this was actually a super informative zine and so good because it just had all these personal places that Ebony, the girl who wrote it, put together. Um, and because I liked her style, I was like, I think I like all the places that she's gone to in this zine. So you can use your own personal experience to connect with other people as well. Um, and that's something super awesome as well about the zine community again if you look it up online people love making zines and um, in whatever way they're made there's a real community around it so what I've done now is I've just tied a knot and I've just snipped it off so you can see kind of that I've just got a little stitch there and then that is connected so I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom again apologies about using white thread but you know keeping you on your toes we're all going through this together so I'm going to stitch that bottom bit together as well. And off we trot. I'm going to be speedy. Look how speedy. Okay, cool. So I'm feeling good about that. I should probably show you this time how I tie it off. What I do is I actually just, yeah, tie, like make a little knot with my needle. See how I'm just going to go through there like that? I'm just going to tie a knot but you could also just like tape the thread down or something if you're feeling a bit shook about tying um, a knot with the thread, but that that's what it is. <laughs> it's so hard to show something as fine as threading a needle um, on Zoom, but I think we've done it. We've gotten through it together. That's outstanding. 
Cool. So I have my bound professionally look out HarperCollins um, <laughs> zine here, uh, ready to be decorated with the story of my house plants. Let's do it. Okay. So I think I want to begin with the um, cover. Um, but first, before I do that, I want to be kind of taking the direction of whether I should put more writing or illustration in this zine. So um, I'm going to launch another poll because I want to find out whether if you guys keep your own diaries, whether you predominantly draw or if you write. So, uh, or if you do something else like collaging or something else, which let's see, do you predominantly write? Do you predominantly draw? Let us see. I'm excited to find out. So while you do that, I'm going to get my materials sorted. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Okay, so oh, it looks like drawing is coming out on top. Excellent. This is good. Can't wait to draw up a storm. Okie doke. All right, so it looks like drawing is really winning there. So I'm going to share these results. 70% of you love a draw, 20% love writing, 10% other. What is the other? Is it poetry? Is it collage? We'll never know. Or you can make a comment and let us know what else you use your um, journaling for. Um, okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to launch straight into this zine. Uh, I do want to do one more poll though, because this is actually a critical question because I want to start with the cover. It is, what do you want? Um, the cover of my zine to have on it? Should I do a collage? Should I do an automatic drawing? Should I do a poem? Should I have some stickers? You be the judge. Let's see. Oh, I actually really like this. I'm actually a Libran and find decision making to be really difficult. So this is a bit like a choose your own adventure extravaganza. Um, oh, collage. There's a lot of you loves a collage. I love a collage too. And it would be nice with this. I actually have some plant some plant resource collage material. Oh, stickers are pretty popular too. So maybe we can do a little bit of both. <gasps> we can do whatever we want, actually. Stunning. No one wants to hear about my poetry. Fair. <laughs> That's really fair. What would my poll be? I'm sorry, fiddle leaf figs. The end is nigh. <laughs> oh, stunning. Okay, that was my poem. Done. You didn't ask for it, but you got it. Um, okay, so there's going to be a collage with a whisper of stickers. So to make a collage, um, I have some magazines and I have some, what have I got here? I've also got, look at this ideal situation. I have uh, this book on roses as well. Um, here in Brisbane every year there's the Lifeline Book Fest and that is the best fair of old books and when I go I love to pick up things like this which are kind of like the like ye olde weldy gardening books and things like that um I mean this isn't about houseplants but it has some nature in it so I think I'm going to use this for my collage um I've also got yeah some old magazines Frankie is always so good even though it breaks my heart to tear out pages from it but I think there'll be some plant material in there too so I'm going to write first, given this is a zine about houseplants, uh, I'm going to just say that. I'm going to write that on the cover. I'm going to be like, this is a zine about houseplants. So no one is confused. So I'm going to do that. This is a zine. Gosh, this could be a song too. It's just a zine about houseplants. <laughs> Goodness me, about houseplants. This is a zine about houseplants. I've written on the front and look, I've taken up a lot of space there, um, but I'm going to just launch into some collaging. So uh, because this is slightly, you know, we did that on the spot. Let's see what I find. I'm just going to launch straight in. <gasps> plants. It was meant to be. Did we just manifest that? I think we might have. I'm just ripping this out. Okay. And I like too that there's a little bit of text about um, plants too. So I'm going to cut that out. There's nothing better either than making a little poem with just like you, I was talking about with automatic drawing, doing some like automatic poetry where you cut out the little tiny words and then like glue them into place in a new arrangement. But that new arrangement is your poem 
Doesn't that sound fancy? Yes, it does. So I'm going to cut out plant. Now basically to here, just so you know, once you've got your booklet, it's really off you go on your own adventure. You really can do whatever you want. So I'm going to keep decorating this, but um, basically the idea of zine making is that it really is just like our pulse, a choose your own adventure. It can be about whatever you want. Um, so uh, the way I make my zine is my way. And the best thing about your zine is that it's an expression of you. Um, and that's something that I really like to keep in mind for the art that I make too, is I try not to get too worried as to whether it's good. I'm more just trying and stay focused on whether it's me, like whether it's personal. I don't like my art when I feel like I'm trying to produce something that I think, you know, is someone else. Like, I feel like if I look at something and I'm like, oh, it just isn't, it isn't my true expression. That's when I start to feel a bit annoyed at myself. <laughs> but I feel like the best art is an expression of you because no one else could make it but you. Um, you didn't know you were going to get some philosophical musings through this, uh, <laughs> but you have. Um, here we go. Okay, I'm going to cut out some of these plants now. Chopping that up. I've got a little lettuce here, it seems. I wonder if you can grow lettuce inside. Let's see. <laughs> it actually be pretty handy to have some lettuce growing inside these days. I've never wanted to start a veggie patch more. Okay, I've cut out a cute little green friend here. Now, when I come to do a collage, I just love a handy glue stick. Nothing fancy here either. Um, I find that it just works the best. So I've got another little piece of greenery here. And I'm going to cut out some more. Hmm. And let's do another just little abstract chop. <gasps> This is going to be great. Oh, and then maybe we're going to do a little bit of rippage. Isn't that fancy? Oh, that's going to be nice. Okie doke. So, okay, that was meant to be. I'm just going to cut off a little bit more because that's going to look really cute. And because there was a bit of interest in stickers, I'm going to use some of these little sticky dots that I have on the side to lay a little bit of a foundation for my collage. So, um, cool. Oh my God. Someone said it's kind of like a ransom letter. Yes. Maybe to my fiddle leaf fig wanted one alive plant. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think that's how ransom letters work. It's more like I have your house plant and I will not water it unless you give me one cute zine there. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed the ransom letter. Okay. So I'm just going to glue on this little chunk that I've cut out here and I'm just going to glue it on to the top. Okay, cool. I have slightly compromised the dot on my eye, but that's okay. That's something I'm willing to, you know what? I'm not going to compromise it. I'm just going to rip that little bit off because I make the rules. So I've got that fun little bit there. And then I'm going to glue down some of these stunning lettuces. Beautiful. Oh, I just had an idea too. I think I actually want, because you know, the life of my plants at home is very much dominated by moi. Um, I think I need a person to symbolize that. So I am going to look through my source material, see if I can find a person that I can maybe put nestled in amongst. Oh, she looks like she wants to be in some plants. Absolutely. Oh, there's a lot of good peeps here. You can always count on Frankie to have just a person standing cutely. So we've got, we've got a planted person. I'm going to cut them out. Cool. Now, if you really love collaging as well, I've got some pals who do a really good amount of collaging and they always recommend nail scissors as well. So if you find that you love creating little cutouts and things like that, um, get amongst some nail scissors. I think because they're small and you can really get into like all the little crevices of what you're cutting out. Um, but I do not have nail scissors. I have my clunky scissors here, but that's okay. We are doing what we can do. Oh my gosh. My dog is just sighing so loudly beside me. I don't know if anyone can hear it but if you can hear some disembodied sighing it's just my doggo maybe i'll show her at the end 
I should make a zine about her too. Okay, so I'm going to put my person here. And then I think because I don't like faces of strangers on my zines, I just feel like, I don't know, they're watching my personal poetry. They're looking over my things. I like to obscure their faces. So I think I'm going to pop her down and then I'm going to come over the top with a bit of foliage on the face. I'm very into this. So maybe this is where I can use my sticky dot as a side note. Cute. Yes, that is. Oh, if only we had another poll opportunity. I'm like, hmm, I think we have to go with a green dot, but maybe pink would be nice for a bit of contrast. I'm going to go pink. Oh, making a decision. It's so hard. That's okay. There's always tomorrow for a new zine, but I'm just going to pop that on her face. Cute. Now I don't have to worry about her watching over my zine making and seeing my personal plant information. Okay. Um, now that bit I ripped off, it's not going in the bin. It's going on the zine. So I'm going to put that on. Now, the thing I like about collaging too is that it's a matter of kind of like building up the surface. So it's a, it's a matter of like putting something down and then kind of assessing if you like the composition. Um, and the best thing about it is like, again, there's no like right or wrong way to go about it. Um, and it's good, again, by doing this day in and day out, though, you start to see, like, what little compositions you like. You see what kind of, like, tells your story. I'm going to add in a couple maybe more little sticky dots on there, too. Um, but you kind of, I really do believe that, like, you learn stuff from this process, too. And most importantly, it's super relaxing, particularly when you don't have someone nattering at you like me the whole time. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to take this opportunity too to maybe put a little bit of foliage at the back too. So I've got another little cutout here. Uh, and I'm just going to scan my eye on this little chit chat here because there's been some pretty fun points. Love that ransom letter chat. Um, someone's using their favorite music album covers. That is such a good idea. So good. Okay, cool. I'm going, and then cool, I've also then got this like little abstract piece from what I cut out and I'm just going to rip off these edges and I'm going to glue that down on the back. Again, sometimes the shapes that come out of the actual cutting out are some of the best pieces as well because you just didn't plan them at all. So that's my back cover, that's my front cover. And I am at this point just going to add in a little bit of scribble on the front, it's just going to be truly automatic. So I'm just going to scribble, scribble, scribble in a continuous line. Cool. And if you like automatic drawing and that sort of stuff, also give continuous line drawing a bit of a Google too, because that's a great vibe too. So I've just done some real scribbling there just to add a little bit of texture. Um, and I think I'm going to do the same thing with a crayon. I'm feeling a lot of green here. I'm being very literal with my, <laughs> with my attitude here. So I, Plants, groundbreaking, green. <laughs> okay, cool. What else? I feel like, in my opinion, for it to be a collage, there needs to be like some layers as well. Don't let me box you in with that line of thinking, but I just believe that. So I'm going to try and add a little bit more um, before I launch in to the rest of my zine. So what have I got here? Oh, this is so good, this book. What have I got? So I do feel like I'm going to sneeze at some point. If that happens, just go with me. I think it's gone. Why did I mention it? <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to happen. What have I got here? Sometimes I look in these books and I'm like, oh my God, they're too good to even cut out. But no, I see a little plant that's going to get cut out. You are always meant to be in this collage. This little friend, Rosa Sericia. Why did I try to pronounce that? <laughs> We're all friends here now. Okay, I've chopped that. Where did my sneeze go? That would be another really good zine, actually. Would love to see the illustration from that. Uh, and going by what I said before, circling right back, a collage is filled with layers. So I'm going to try and create a little bit of layering here. So I'm ripping that up because it didn't quite fit. Oh, I'm gonna rip it up again. So a bit of foliage here, some more. And I don't think I want to see her, her shoes. I'm not feeling those yellow shoes. So I'm going to cover them up as well. Oh, we're getting quite abstract. One hazard of this is you do get kind of gluey fingers, but you know, we're professional zeners now. So it's just what we have to do. 
Okay, so before I finish the cover, I'm just going to scan through these texts here to see if there's anything else I want to put in there for my cover. <gasps> oh, I know it's just house plants, but there's some flowers here. That could be a pretty nice vibe. Let's do that. Let's just have a whisper of flora because why not? Cool. Okie doke. And that way I think that'll be nice because there'll be a little bit of contrast with the, all the green. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit though. Cool. So I've just cut out like a little bunch here. And I will hold this up so you can see. I'm just going to glue that there. Cool. All right. I think that's looking pretty cute. I think I want one bit more scribbling. I think I'm actually going to do some little leaf drawings on the front too. Cool. Just for a bit of something, something. Oh, they always look like footballs when I draw leaves. Please look at that. That's a small football. <laughs> oh dear. I'll try and remedy that. Um, cool. All right. We've got some foliage. It's happening. Cool. Okay. I'm feeling good about that cover. Um, let's open up um, and do some scribbage. Now, if you hear some squawking in the background, that's absolutely my baby, just so if, you, if you're wondering. <laughs> but it's really um, amping up too. So what are people saying? I'm making page of stuff that I like, that's cute. I think what I'm going to do is, I think maybe it'd be cute to make like a little contents page, like within this thing, you will find. Let's see, so maybe first I'll say welcome. Welcome to the zine. Welcome. In this thing, you will find What will you find? <laughs> you will find my musings, musings, <laughs> plant info. <sighs> and then I might put a memorandum, as we said. Is it memorandum, memorandum? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, cool. So I've got a little welcome page and that will not be done unless it has some scribbling on it. So. Uh, I just feel like I'm going to do, I'm going to take a minute to just think about my favorite plant in the house. What is my favorite? Oh, I know what my favorite house plant is. It's actually pretty funny. It's a comedy, comedy king plant. I call it my Anthony Polia, like Anthony Kalia from Australian Idol, because it is a Polia plant. And I was like, Anthony Polia seems like a really great, um, name for a house plant. <laughs> so I'm going to be inspired by that plant and I'm going to do a little scribbly scribble. Oh, I never thought that I would do a drawing inspired by Anthony Kalia or Palia as it would be. <laughs> and I'm going to continue that I think on the front page because why not? Scribbly scribble. Beautiful. <gasps> it's an abstract work of art. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to add in, I think, some fun colour now too. And I'm just going to like, yeah, really just scribble, scribble out. Because I really think it's just about like creating colour and texture. But again, if you really love doing detailed illustrations, like how cool if you'd made one about your houseplants to do like some really fun, detailed, illustrated line drawings of your plants. It would actually be such a fun um, thing to actually draw like a good little pick of your house plants. Um, what I was looking for then was the word mindful. It would be a nice mindful thing to do. So with that in mind, full, um, I actually have some cute plants right here. Look at this cute plant. Oh, this is on my desk. This, this is actually made by a little Melbourne artist. She's so great. Um, and uh, I love these little ceramics and I put all these fun things. This is a devil's ivy, um, but I think it's a monstera that we've got here. It's so cute. I love these with little holes. So I think I'm actually, instead of doing my scribby scrib scribs, um, I'm going to use one page um, to do a proper drawing of that. So um, let's see. Now we've got uh, 10 minutes left. So I'm going to launch the final poll. Uh, and while I do this proper, well, proper drawing of um, my little desk plan, I'd just like to know if you'd like to know about anything a bit more. And if so, what I should natter on. So, okey doke. So I'm going to look at that. 
looking at my thing now what are we thinking so yeah what would you like to know more about why i make zines of journals how i found out about them what is the point of making a journal um or places to find inspiration i said all of the above but you've seen how much i can chat now would we even get through it <laughs> all righty so i'm doing just like a very loose little line sketch I think my favorite thing are the handles on this vase. So what's winning? Places to find inspiration. Cool, and all of the above. You guys, that's so nice. I'm gonna take that as you like. You like all those topics. <laughs> okay, so, all right. It seems like you'd like to chat more about places to find inspiration. Um, so, um, where are the best places? Good question. Um, look, I will, say that I think that um, the internet is a great place for um, finding information on zines. So definitely give zines a, um, a good Google uh, and have a look on Pinterest and that sort of thing of like all the things that people have made um, when it comes to zine making. But um, my other best piece of information is to get off the internet um, and actually like when things open up again, go to the library. Um, if there's a zine fair or even like I said before, like a book fair or something like that, where you can find vintage books and things like that. Um, I really feel like there is just so much inspiration to be had. Um, if you can like take your zine making outside, like such a nice thing to do is to like make up your little zine before you go out. So like do your little binding um, and then go and do it while you're sitting in the park. Like what a great thing to do each day um, to like uh, take your zine making on the road or like do it at the gallery. Um, that's another really fun thing to do is to make up your booklet and then to go to the gallery and then make a zine about all the artwork you see or, you know, little things that you are inspired by, even just on your journey to wherever you're going. Um, I think that uh, making it before you go is a good idea, even though you absolutely could make it while you were there if you take your kit and everything with you. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of inspiration to be found just in like observing the outside world and that sort of thing and then your response to it. Um, definitely, like I said at the beginning, check out Rookie. I've just like, I have loved Rookie since I was a teen. Um, have a look on the interwebs and then get your hands on the book. Again, go to the library, see if you can get those Rookie yearbooks um, and, uh, and just revel in all the glittery goodness. Um, Podcasts, just for general inspiration. Obviously, this is separate to zines. I love listening to podcasts and things to keep me inspired. One of my favorite ones is called Creative Pep. Uh, so if you're creative and you feel like you need a little like pep in your step, Andy J Pizza um, is super funny and gives you like heaps of fun tips on how to stay motivated. And if you want to look ahead to having a creative career or something like that. Lots of really awesome tips and that sort of thing. Um, but what else? I'm trying to think where else I find inspiration. I know it can be like such a suck in it, like to just sit scrolling on Instagram, but I would say that like, um, that's just sometimes not the way to go because you think you're going to get lots of inspiration too, but then it can just be kind of like a wash of information. And particularly if you're trying to produce creative work, by the way, there is my stunning drawing. <laughs> um, if you're trying to make creative work, sometimes I feel like if I'm on Instagram too much, um, it can feel like you're just making things that look like everything else, which is why journaling is so good. Because if you do it enough and if you are getting in touch with like this sense of what your own artistic style is well then you can start to like really get in your own world and be inspired by yourself in some way and that's why i really underline reflection um, and try and find inspiration in your own reflections and try and copy yourself so if you have made um, a zine or you've, you've made a really awesome page in your journal like two years ago try and reinterpret it with your new learned sense of self and I um, now because I feel like sometimes I do this exercise actually where I will um, I will look at some of my old work and then I'll try and recreate it with um, like, yeah, with my current self, because I, I understand that 
you learn so much just through the passing of time. And particularly if you're creating work, you learn a lot through the work that you create as well. So definitely sources to find inspiration, library, outside world, absolutely through the internet as well, but in small doses, take your making on the road and try and find inspo in yourself for show. So, okay, so I've got that page. I think I'm gonna write on the bottom too, desk plant. I actually like the idea of like, you could go around the house and absolutely draw a picture of each of your plants too. Maybe that would be even more inspiration to keep them alive because you're like, oh my goodness, you're so beautiful desk plan. I just want to help you thrive. I think, look, we've only got five minutes left, but I need to make this page RIP Fiddle Leaf because, you know, she was expensive um, <laughs> and she didn't make it. Gosh, I'm trying to actually think what a fiddle leaf even looks like now. That's how long ago, because I'm not allowed to buy them anymore. <laughs> um, because too many have died at my hand. RIP fiddle leaf big. Okie doke. Um, maybe I just want to, I'm like, maybe I don't even want to draw it. Maybe I just want to do a little scribble. I think I do. I think I'm going to use pink though, instead of, instead of the green. There's been, there's been a lot of green and I'm going to do a swirly whirly scribble because I've got a lot of conflicted feelings about these figs. Why did I let them die? Why was I complicit? Goodness me. <laughs> there we go. RIP fiddle leaf fig. It was good while it lasted. Cool. I think this page would also be really cute with some text. So, I mean, I could use my typewriter, but that reeks of effort. So I'm just going to use some pencil and I'm going to just write some words that I think when I think of the journey of my fiddle leaf, the number one question is why? <laughs> and then I also might put water. Gosh, lots of questions. Like, why didn't I water you? And then I might also put one more word. What springs to mind? I'm going to put, I'm going to be future. Will I ever see you again? Will I ever own a fiddle leaf fig that thrives? These are my questions. Thank you, Doug. I'm going to do one final page and I'm going to use my sticky dots because I think that these are pretty cool. And I think I'm just going to create a bit of a pattern. Cool. And now I'm actually just going to think about maybe where I think in my house I'm missing a plant. Where? Oh, I actually know. I know the answer immediately. Where in my house? I wish my bathroom had more plants in it. Like there's a little ledge there and I just think that it's yearning for some house plants. So I'm going to write a little note to myself. I'm going to say, Rachel, think about plants in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Um, and you know what? Maybe I'm going to look back at this scene one day and I'm going to be like, I have manifested. My bathroom is thriving with plants. Think about plants in the bathroom. Cool. Now, one of the questions that was on that final poll, which seemed like you wanted to maybe hear about it because that, that last question, all of the above was selected a lot, um, was why zine making? Um, you know, why make this zine about houseplants? Isn't it just pointless? Um, and you know, like this is something that I like often will tackle with my art. I'm like, what's the point? Why am I making it? But I always just come back to the idea that making something like this, um, you can't underestimate the power of, um, of documenting your existence like your life is your life and um you know as you get older to you understand how special your experiences are how much you've learned and in some ways how much you wish you could go back and and see through the eyes of your younger self and all that sort of stuff so um i mean i'm doing a i'm doing an art show this year on letters that i collected when i was a teenager those kind of letters that you just pass around to your friends and things like that and i never would have thought at the time that 15 years later um, or 17 years later, I would be doing a whole art show about, um, about my kind of teenage experiences and that sort of stuff. So basically you never know where this kind of reflection will lead. Um, and particularly if you want to keep exploring your artistic 
eye and that sort of thing. Um, this kind of journaling and um, exploration of your style and everything uh, can be a really great tool to um, harnessing your creative journey. So thank you so much for participating. Um, I think, uh, I think, I mean, that's my zine done. Um, I hope that you guys had fun and maybe have some tools to go on to make more zines in the future. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them through to Goma, absolutely DM me on Instagram. Um, I would love to chat to you and um, I hope you had fun. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll hand it back to the Goma team.